فاشرف بي لاشتغالي بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اللهم ات نفوسنا تقواها وزكها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها ومولاها اللهم اهدنا لاحسن الاخلاق لا يهدي لاحسنها الا انت واصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عن سيئها الا انت اما بعد my beloved brothers and sisters inshallah ta'ala today we're going to start the explanation of a piece of advice that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah gave to a person who wants to be patient with the harms that people afflict him with. So he mentions 20 things that will aid you and help you to become patient with the hardship, the suffering and the pain you may endure from the creation. And this piece of advice, you will find it in his Jam'ul Masail, um, the first volume, page 168 to page 174. But before I start, I wanted to inform you of the importance of patience and the position that patience has in our religion. Patience is a high station from the stations of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks about patience in the Qur'an many times. Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, he said, ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ الصَّبْرَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ فِي أَكْثَرَ, في أكثر مِنْ تِسْعِينَ مَوْضِعًا Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He mentions, Imam Ahmed said, ذَكَرَ اللَّهُ الصَّبْرَ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ فِي أَكْثَرَ مِنْ تِسْعِينَ مَوْضِعًا More than 90 places. More than 90 places. Ibn Al-Qayyim mentions that in his Madaruj Salikin. So the fact that Allah mentions patience many places in the Quran, يَدُلُّنَا دَلَالَةَ بَيِّنَا عَلَىٰ عِظَمِ الصَّبْرِ أَمَا عَلَىٰ عِظَمِ شَأْنِ الصَّبْرِ وَرَفِعِ مَكَانَتِهِ The fact that Allah mentions patience so many times in the Quran, that shows us how great and how important Patience is. And that the need, the creation have for this act, this obedient act of patience. Every single act of obedience that a person wants to do without patience, he won't be able to do it. And every sin that a person wants to stay away from, if he doesn't have patience, he won't be able to stay away from. And anything that Allah has destined subhanahu wa ta'ala for you and afflicts you with, if you don't have patience, you will not be able to endure it. So patience enters acts of obedience. Without it, you can't be obedient to Allah wa ta'ala. And it also enters staying away from sins because you, without patience, you won't be able to stay away from. And it also enters into the endurance of suffering and pain if Allah chooses to afflict you with it subhanahu wa ta'ala so if that's the case then then we need patience a lot and that is from the greatest thing that a person needs in order to succeed and to gain good in this world and the hereafter if you open the Quran today and you look at how Allah speaks about patience sometimes he speaks about patience by commanding us to come with it Sometimes Allah wa ta'ala, He speaks about patience by prohibiting from us the opposite of patience, which is hastiness and lack of patience. Sometimes Allah wa ta'ala, He praises the people who are patient. Sometimes Allah promises the people of patience a high station and a high level in Jannah and a, fi- a good final abode. 
Sometimes Allah Taala gives them unrestricted positions and statuses for them. He mentions for them unrestrictedly. And also Allah Taala states in the Quran that He loves these people, the people of patience, and that He is with them in support and aid. And He's going to aid them and He's going to protect them. So those are just examples of how Allah speaks about patience in the Quran. And that again shows us what? The importance of patience and how high it is and how important it is. <coughs> and the excessive need that we have for it. If I sit down today and I want to speak about patience, that is going to be a sit that's going to be very long. Because the matters pertaining to patience and the science or the knowledge behind it, scholars have written books, volumes, mu'allafat. And the ahadith they brought together. Ibn Abi Dunya, mathalan. He has a book on as-sabr, patience on the qurab, the hardship and the suffering. The, he has a book on it. And he brings all the narrations together. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he wrote the book, Iddatul Sabirin wa Dakhiratu Shakirin. Some scholars, they focused on patience on particular things, on particular acts of obedience. Like, for example, gaining knowledge, for instance. Some scholars, they wrote books in patience in whilst gaining knowledge. Because it's just so vast. And that alone is volumes. But for us, inshallah ta'ala, the book we're going to be taking is just a particular part of patience, which is As-sabru ala adha al-khalq. Patience on the hardship, the pain of the creation and what they put you through. Every one of us here knows that a human being in this world, لا يسلم من أذى الخلق, he will not be safe from the, 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 the pain and the suffering of the people. The hardship and the pain that the people can make you go through no one is safe from it. You will feel pain from what the people do to you, one way or another. And the reason is because from our nature, the way Allah created us is we're going to live with one another. We're going to coexist. And so if we're going to coexist, our behaviors and our nature is different in the way we see things, what we see right and what we see wrong. And what we like and what we hate. So my dealings and my nature might go opposite to yours and I might hurt you and I might make you go through something. So you're bound to have patience in order to know how to deal with this. A sabr. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah from one of the things Allah Taala gave him is when he speaks about a topic he doesn't just speak about it alone but he brings other issues connected to it. And he makes sure that the understanding of that particular point is understood from many different angles. Alayhi rahmatullah. And he mentions 20 things that will aid and support a person to be patient with the suffering and the pain that he endures from the people. And I ask Allah wa ta'ala that he benefits us in this. And that Allah makes us from the slaves who are patient and who have gratitude. Because the religion is two halves. Half is patience and half is gratitude. Ad-deenu nisfan The religion is two halves. Nisfun sabr wa nisfun shukr. Half is patience and half is based on the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. عَجَبَ لِأَمْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِ إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٌ إِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ ضَرَّاءُ صَبْرَ فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَإِنْ أَصَابَتُهُ صَرَّاءُ شَكْرًا فَكَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ وَلَيْسَ ذَلِكَ إِلَّا لِلْمُؤْمِنِ Because in your, this world that you're living in, you're going through one of two situations. You're either going through good times, where you're going to come with gratitude. Or you're going to go through hardship, which you're going to come with patience. And that's how a believer is. So I ask Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, أَنْ يَنْفَعَنَا بِمَا عَلَّمَنَا وَأَنْ يُعَلِّمَنَا مَا يَنْفَعُنَا وَأَنْ لَا يَجْعَلْ فِي مَا عَلَّمَنَا وَبَالًا عَلَيْنَا I ask Allah that He benefits us with what He teaches us.
and he increases us in understanding and knowledge. And that he doesn't also, subhanahu wa ta'ala, make the knowledge that we already have a proof against us. And he doesn't destroy us. And that Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he makes, Whatever we're learning here, inshallah, in, in all our other lessons, that Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, he makes it a proof for us and not against us. Verily, Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, is sami'un qareebun mujib. Allah is one who hears, who is close to his creation, and he accepts the supplication of the believers. We're now going to start, inshallah ta'ala. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله ابن تيمية says ويعين العبد على هذا الصبر عدة أشياء There are many things that are going to aid and support a slave in patience and then he lists those things now there are many things I'm some things that will aid a person to be patient and then he goes the first one is the first one is from the 20 that a person testifies that Allah Taala is the one who created the action of the creation harakatihim their movements and when they're not moving and they're still Allah created it subhanahu wa ta'ala and their wills everything is created by Allah everything Allah wills would happen and whatever Allah does not will will not happen Nothing moves in the upper universe, in the upper world, and in the lower world, nothing moves. Dharra, even a mustard seed, illa bi idhnihi except with Allah tabarak wa ta'ala's permission. Wa mashi'ati and Allah's will. Fal ibadu alah. The creation and the slaves are an instrument. فَانْظُرْ إِلَى الَّذِي سَلَّطَهُمْ عَلَيْكَ Look at the one who has afflicted you with them. وَلَا تَنْظُرْ إِلَى فِعْلِهِمْ Do not look at the, the action of the creation. بِكَ to you. تَسْتَرِحْ مِنَ الْهَمِّ وَالْغَمْ And if you do that, he said, you will find comfort, tranquility, relaxation from distress and depression. Now this point that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions, is the first point that helps you and aids you in being patient with the pain that people can put you through. And that is to know and to testify and to fully be aware of that this slave that you're looking at, his actions, his movements, his silence, everything of it is created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even his wills and his motives are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So nothing in this world moves. Nothing takes place in this world. Whether it be this world or whether it be high above, nothing happens except with Allah's will. With, except with Allah's permission subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I focus on the one who is running everything, then I will find tranquility and comfort. Instead of focusing on this creation who I have been tested with. And that I realize that this is all what Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wills and wishes. And that is what Allah says in Surah Al Taqweer. What did He say? That you do not will except if Allah wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the universe. So we believe as Ahlul Sunnah the Af'alul Ibad is makhluqa. The actions of the creations are created. And that the slave will not will something unless Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala He has willed it. So that first point is what helps us to be far from distress and pain and agony. Then we realize, okay, 
I should really focus on this creation. The second point the Sheikh says, Ashani, Mima Yu'inu al Abda ala hada sabr. One of the things that will aid you as a person to be patient and to endure is a yeshada dhunubahu. That you witness, you testify your own shortcomings. You bear witness to your sins. وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ إِنَّمَا صَلَّطَهُمْ عَلَيْهِ بِذَنْبِ And Allah afflicted you with these people because of your own sins. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى As Allah has said, وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ you are not afflicted with an affliction except because of that which your hands have put forward. You're only afflicted with this affliction because of what your hands have put forward. And then Allah goes on to say, وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ But Allah has also forgiven you for a lot. He's not holding you account to everything that your hands have put forward. You're only being punished for some of it. So you know the reason why these people are commenting nasty things about you and you know the reason why these people are speaking to you in the way they are speaking to you and they're dealing with you in the way they're dealing with you that it is because of you it's because of your shortcoming it's because of something you put forward and something you've done فَإِذَا شَهِدَ الْعَبْدُ ابن تَيْمِيَ then says if the slave bears witness to that أَنَّ جَمِيعَ مَا يَنَالُهُ مِنَ الْمَكْرُوهِ فَسَبَبُهُ ذُنُوبُهُ that every single thing that you are going through that you are suffering from it, and the hardship that you're going through فَسَبَبُهُ ذُنُوبُهُ The reason for it is your sins. Ibn Taymiyyah said, if you do that and you bear witness that everything that's happening to you, the hardship that you're going through is because of your sins, Ibn Taymiyyah says, what would you do? إِشْتَغَلَ بِالتَّوْبَةِ وَالْإِسْتِغْفَارِ The person busies himself with repentance and then he starts busying himself with istighfar. من الذنوب from the sins التي صلّطهم عليه. This word istighfar and توبة don't mean the same, by the way. توبة and istighfar mean two different things. Especially they are from the words إذا اجتمعا افترقا وإذا افترقا اجتمعا. ولذلك some of the riwayat of the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام where the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he says. إِسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ Ask Allah for forgiveness. فَإِنِّي أَمَ تُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ Sorry, تُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ Repent to Allah. فَإِنِّي أَتُوبُ فِي الْيَوْمِ مِئَةَ مَرَّةِ I repent to Allah daily a hundred times. So when the scholars, they said, since the Prophet said, عليه الصلاة والسلام, repent to Allah, I repent to Allah every day a hundred times. Does a person say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah or does he say Atubullah, Atubullah, Atubullah mm. I'm Allah, uh, uh, Oh Allah, I repent to you, I repent What does he say? You see? And Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah He has a risala, inshallah, if Allah gives us another time We'll go over it with this it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a little risala Risala to fil istighfar It's on the issue of istighfar only Some benefits that he wrote on it Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah alayhi rahmatullah I want you guys to research the difference between a tawbah and istighfar. I want you guys to research it, inshallah ta'ala. And I'll tell you tomorrow what it is. So when the person testifies and admits that every, he bear witness that every hardship I'm going through, the reason for it is my sins. Then what will that do for you? Look at the benefit that it has. The minute you do that, ishtagala bitawbati wal istighfari min al-dunub. The person busies himself with repentance, asking for forgiveness from his sins. التي صلّطهم عليه بسببها. Repentance and forgiveness from the sins due to it you were tested with this with this person in the first place. بسببها عن ذمهم ولومهم والوقيعة فيهم. The people were what were rebuking you, and they were blaming you, and they were slandering you. 
Those things that the people are doing about doing to you, which is to rebuke you, which is to blame you, which is to slander you, all of that had happened because of the sins that you have done. And Ibn Taymiyyah said, if you bear witness that this has happened to you because of your own sins, then you're going to busy yourself with repentance and forgiveness. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ الْعَبْدَ يَقَعُ فِي النَّاسِ Oh, pay attention. قاعدة. These are قواعد. وَإِذَا رَأَيْتَ If you see العبد a slave يَقَعُ فِي النَّاسِ He then slanders the people or he speaks about the people إِذَا آذَوْهُ If they harm him. وَلَا يَرْجِعُ إِلَى نَفْسِ And he doesn't go back to himself. So when the people say things about him, when the people are out there harming him, you see, if you see that and you see that slave, he doesn't go back to himself. Below me in blaming himself. And he's not doing istighfar. Know that this person is truly an afflicted person. His affliction is greater than the harm of, of the people. Whenever you see a slave, when the people are blaming him or the people are slandering him or the people are rebuking him, he doesn't go back to himself and say, what have I done? <coughs> what have I put forward? What sin have I done? And then doesn't go for istighfar and tawbah, doesn't do that. Then fa'alam no anna musibatahu, this person's affliction that he's going through is greater and bigger than what he really thinks he's going through. وَإِذَا تَابَ وَاسْتَغْفَرَ But if he repents and he asks for forgiveness وَقَالَ And then he says هَذَا بِذُنُوبِي The reason why these people are blaming me and rebuking me is because of my sins and they're slandering me is because of my sins صَارَتْ فِي حَقِّهِ نِعْمَةً Then this has become a blessing for him. What the people are saying about him is a blessing for him. What the people are doing to him is a blessing for him. The slandering it becomes a blessing for him. قال علي بن أبي طالب ابن تيم سينس. He said علي بن أبي طالب said كلمة من جواهر الكلم. ابن تيم says علي بن أبي طالب said a statement which is from the جواهر gems of words a gem and jewels. He said لا يرج لا يرجون عبد إلا ربه لا يرجون عبد إلا ربه a slave should not have hope except in his Lord. ولا يخافن and he should not fear عبد أي slave إلا ذنبه except his own sins. Don't hope except from Allah تبارك وتعالى and don't be scared except from your own sins. وروي عنه وعن غيره and it is also being narrated from Ali and also other than Ali which is what? ما نزل بلاء an affliction, an, a calamity is not sent down illa bi bin except because of a sin. Wa marufi'a and it is not lifted illa bi tawbatin except with the repentance. So this is the second point that Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah mentions, end of quote. This is connected to the first one. The f- second one is connected to the first one. So first of all, you, 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 you've <coughs> observed and you realized that the slave's actions are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then what you did was he, you looked at who is the one who afflicted you with this creation and used this human, the human to afflict you. And you say to yourself, the one who has is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you ask yourself the third question, why did Allah afflict me with this creation? And then your answer becomes, dhunubi my sins, wa tafriti and my shortcoming, wa taqsiri and my shortfallings. And instead of Wasting your time and preoccupying your time with بسبهم, insulting them in return فيهم, and trying to slander them in return ولومهم, and blaming them نفسه, you busy yourself with your own sins 
and your own shortcomings. And that you acknowledge that there are some sins with you that you deserve to be punished for. And you increase in forgiving, asking for forgiveness and repentance to Allah wa ta'ala. Then what happens is everything that is then said to you or done to you becomes a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh rahimahullah he says, الثالث, the third, أيشهد العبد حسن الثواب الذي وعده الله لمن عفا وصبر كما قال تعالى وجزاء سيئة سيئة مثلها فمن عفا وأصلح فأجره على الله إنه لا يحب الظالمين ولما كان الناس عنده مقابلة الأذى ثلاثة أقسام ابن تيمية says the third is that the person bears witness he bear, he bear witness to حسن الثواب the immense reward that Allah has promised subhanahu wa ta'ala to the person who forgives and comes with sabr, patience. كما قال تعالى, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وجزاء سيئة سيئة مثلها The reward of evil that is done to you is the response of it, the likes of it. فمن عفا and anyone who forgives وأصلح and he perfects فأجره على الله his reward is with Allah إنه لا يحب الظالمين Allah does not like the transgressors so in this ayah the first portion Allah mentions he says وجزاء سيئة سيئة مثلها a person does it evil to you the response is the same no more no less then Allah says, فَمَنَ عَفَى The one who lacking forgives. He doesn't do that. He chooses not to harm the person in return. وَأَصْلَحَ And he rectifies the situation. فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ The reward is with Allah. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah does not like the transgressors. Transgressors. The oppressors. وَلَمَّا كَانَ النَّاسُ عِنْدَ مُقَابَلَةِ الْأَذَى ثَلَاثَةُ أَقْسَى Ibn Taymiyyah then says, because he's taking this from the ayah, and the people are in response to the harm that they are afflicted, uh, afflicted with. They are of three types. The first one is ظالمون, a transgressor, an oppressive individual. يأخذ فوق حقه, he takes more than his rights. ومقتصدون, a person who is moderate. يأخذ بقدر حقه he only takes what his what's what's his rights he only takes what's his rights ومحسن a good doer يعفو he forgives ويترك حقه and he forgives and he leaves his rights ذكر الأقسام الثلاثة ذكر الأقسام الثلاثة في هذه الآية الله مينشن these three in the verse فأولها, فأولها للمقتصدين the first part وجزاء سيئة سيئة مثلها is the مقتصد the moderate one you punched me I punch you ووسطها and then in the middle فمن عفا وأصلح فأجره على الله the one that's in the middle here is who? للسابقين the forefronts the righteous ones وآخرها and the last one is إنه لا يحب الظالمين is للظالمين the oppressors and then he says ويشهد نداء المناد يوم القيامة and also that the person, he bears witness, that caller that's going to call the day of judgment. Ala la ala liyakum. Ala liyakum. Man wajaba ajruhu ala Allah. The ala is min huruf nida. Oh, stand up. Man wajaba ajruhu ala Allah. Stand up, the one whose rights are today going to be rewarded for him? 
The one, uh, the, the one who said, فَأَجُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ His reward is ready for him. It's placed in the hands of Allah. He's going to be rewarded. He's the فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحُ فَأَجُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Stand up. The one whose right is, is, is with Allah, that is going to be rewarded. فَلَمْ يَقُمْ إِلَّا مَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحُ No one else is going to stand up except the one who is what? فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحُ The only one who's going to stand up is the one who forgave and he rectified. So once you know that the Day of Judgment, this sound is going to be made and this call is going to be done. وَإِذَا شَهِدَ مَعَ ذَلِكَ فَوْتَ الْأَجْرِ بِالْإِنْتِقَامِ If the person bears witness that he's going to miss this reward. فَوْتَ الْأَجْرِ This reward is going to miss you. بِالْإِنْتِقَامِ If you retaliate. وَالِاسْتِفَاءِ سَهُلَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّبْرُ وَالْعَفُوْ Then it becomes easy for you to be patient and to forgive. If you know ala liyaqum man wajaba ajruhu ala Allah, that you're going to miss that calling and you're not going to stand up that day because what did you do? You retaliated, you already took your rights. Then it will become easy for you, he says, to be patient and to forgive. Here the Shaykh Rahimullah, end of quote, he's talking about this time you look at the husn thawab. You look at the reward that's in this act of yours. That which Allah has prepared for these people, the station they gain. The station of what? Maqam sabri ala adal khalqi. The patience on the harm that the people put you through. And the two stations are two. That the ayah mentions. فَمَنْ عَفَى فَمَنْ صَبَرَ The ayah says, the one who what? فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحْ The first station is the sabr. Patient. And remember this. When the people afflict you with the pain, there's two stations. The first one is a martabatu sabr, patience. You're patient with the people's harm that they put you through. The station that is higher than it and it's greater than it is afu and ya'fu anhum. And the station of it is greater. Afu station is greater than the station of patience. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, nas, Those who forgive the people, Wallahu yuhibbu al-muhsineen. Allah loves righteous people. So look, what level, what station is in, uh, the afina anin nas? What station have they reached? Wallahu yuhibbu yash? Muhsineen. So it's maqamul ihsan. And no, not a lot of people reach that. People become Muslims, they become mu'mins. Not everybody's a muhsin like him. The people who reach this stage are the muqarribin, the ones who are very close to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. So as we said, the stations of the people in this verse is how many? Three maratib, three stations. The first ones are who? The ones who? وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةُ مِثْلُهَا That is to martabatu al-mujazat ala سَيِّئَةِ بِسَيِّئَةِ مِثْلِهَا you want to harm me? I'm going to do exactly the same to you. Retaliation. According to what you did to me. Just like the ayah, وَإِنْ عَاقَبْتُمْ فَعَاقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا عُقِبْتُمْ بِهِ And then Allah also says, وَلَإِنْ صَبَرْتُمْ لَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لِلصَّابِرِينَ Again, Allah mentions that in Surah Al-Nahal, ayah 126. We're taking your rights. But remember this station, no extra. That's what he's saying. وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا مِثْلُهَا فَإِنْ عَاقَبْتُمْ فَعَاقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا عُقِبْتُمْ Exactly according. He did this to you? Exactly. You can't go overboard. That's the first station. Okay? That's your right. You're allowed to do that. The station after is عَفْوَ It's greater. وَلِذَلْكَ اللَّهِ سَيْسْ فَمَنْ عَفَى وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَجْرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ the reward here is with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And remember the qa'idah we always mention, Ibhamul Ajri, the fact that the reward hasn't been mentioned is what? Dalalatu ala idami, ala idam al It shows that this reward is great. Fajru ala Allah means you're going to get you know, a great, great reward. The third one is, the third station is Martabatul Mu'aqaba bi ashaddi min al mith. Oh, I'm going to now exceed my limits with you. You just slapped me? <laughs> I'm going to get myself a shotgun. Blow your face off. This is what? This is إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ This is تَعَدِّي exceed, Exceeding your limits. And go overboard in your limits. صحيح? And 
So the people are those three types. Those are the three sections. This Zalim, he takes over his rights. It's his rights. He wants to use something that happened before to do extra. The other one is Muqtasid, he's in the middle. He takes according to his rights. And Muhsin is what? Ya'fu wa yatruk. He's the best of those. Al-Layka Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions that all three of them are what is mentioned in this verse. As for the statement of there's a call, going to come a caller and he will call, Yunadi Munadian, Yawm al Qiyamati, Allah liyakum, Man wajaba ajruhu ala Allah, then this hadith, a long time ago when I looked at it, Ibn Abi Hatim narrated it, Rahimullah, and Ibn Umar, the way he brings it, Al Bayhaqi brings it, Shu'ab al Iban. And also Ibn Abbas and Anas bin Malik are the ones who narrated it. And if you look at Durrat al Manthur of Suyuti, Rahimahullah, I rem- if I'm not wrong and my mind is not telling me incorrect, then I think it was not authentic. But, but the ayah is clear. The ayah is sufficient. That is, if I'm right in saying this and I'm not wrong, we'll conclude here, inshaAllah ta'ala, bi idhnillahi al-kareem, subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah. أستغفرك وأتوب إليه